Hello, Sillaholics, and welcome to Sillaholics Anonymous. I am Shakia. If this is your first time here and you have never viewed any of my content, I do hope that you enjoy the contents of this video and will choose to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I release new content. If you are a subscriber, thank you for the support and welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you guys a little bit of how I do mock-ups. Now, I do mock-ups for so many different things, so many different ways, and it's always a little bit different. But in this one, I'm going to show you um, a few of the ways I do mock-ups for t-shirts. There are several sites where you can get mock-up type designs, depending on the type of mock-up you're looking for. Designbundles.net just recently had a set of like shirts for Bella Canvas and you know, it's a mock-up that I'm not really a fan of, but a lot of people like it where it's just a plain shirt with maybe some pants, a shirt, a cup next to it. You can use those as well. Um, I typically tend to go and use the models from the site that I purchased my shirts from. Um, so in this case, Jiffy Shirts is where I got these particular images from. So you'll go to um, the site, you know, browse through as far as which shirt you are purchasing. And then you would open up the, like the full picture on it, right click, copy the image, and then paste it into Silhouette Studio. All right, once you do that, you will have... the image like this. It'll be a nice high resolution image. Make sure that you're not just doing it from that small picture that you see, but you're actually clicking on it so you have that big picture, right click, copy, and then paste so that it's high resolution. All right, and then you're going to trace it out. All right, we're gonna to go to the trace tool, select trace area, put my box around it, and with this one, I can do a full trace and crop. I don't have to necessarily do a trace and detach, but there are several ways that you can trace. Check out some of my other videos on tracing or visit me on Tuesdays when I do uh, Tracing Tuesdays here on Sillaholics Anonymous, as well as on Facebook on Sillaholics Anonymous. So we're gonna go ahead and hit trace on this. Once I have it traced, I'm going to drag and select over the trace and the image. Go over to modify and crop. I'm gonna double click because there were some little straggly areas in there. So I'm just gonna hold down shift, drag and select over those edit points and hit delete point. All right, so now I have my image all cut out then you will have your design already set up ready to go so once you know you've done your full on design you would then place it over your shirt shrink it down so that it looks proportional to how you actually will present it to your client you know trying to really note how far you would normally put it down from the collar. So don't make it where it goes like way up here and you're making it where it's super big. You know, you're trying to highlight the image, but you also are giving the clients a false sense of how big that design looks. And a lot of times when you do it that big, it starts to look just like, if it's something like this, like a big box and that's it. So I like to shrink it down. Normally when I'm making shirts, I'm gonna just make a box here. My design tends to fall between the shoulder blades and go down. So that's really how I measure how far I do my designs. I don't have a chart that says it should be, you know, 10 inches, 9 inches, 12 inches. I go by the shirt itself and I pretty much go, well, half or maybe like a little over half. And I normally measure between those two points to know where to put my design. So for this, I'm going to pretty much do the same thing. Um bring it down some. I'm actually going to go a little bit smaller um, and go to about right there. So that actually is closer to like the center of the shoulders. Yep, pretty much the center. So that it's not so bold, um, I once I kind of position it, I do go over to my field panel and for transparency, see I'm at 19. If I have it all the way um, up, it becomes really, really dark. I mean, yes, it is a black design, 
but I, to me, it just looks not quite realistic. So I do take the transparency down just a little bit so that you can see the shirt kind of come through it. And then I'll do different things like, you know, either rotate it depending and trying to, you know, really get an idea of how the shirt is. With Silhouette Studio, you don't really have, you know, with like with Photoshop, there's certain tools and things you can do to really make like make it look like it's built into the fabric of the shirts. You don't really have those options so else, so you just kind of have to fake it till you make it. Um, if you have now, if you don't only have basic edition, this actually isn't really that bad. I probably would make it just appear to be a little bit more like a little bit smaller so that it wasn't over that fold. I mean, of course, when you make the design, you can make it however you want. Um, but I probably would have made it kind of not on that fold, so it looks a little bit more realistic. But if you have designer edition or above, you can use your shear tool. So we're gonna click on a line or a transform panel. We're gonna go over to shear, choose shear handles, and you can either like, well, with this one, he's standing up pretty straight. So I don't really have to move it too much. So you can, I mean, if you had to move it around and things like that, but he's actually pretty square. You're gonna see on the other one where that's really gonna come in handy. If you really, really wanted to, you could use the warp tool and um, warp certain aspects of this. So you can kind of, you know, pull this up, move it over some, um, move certain things up or down to kind of conform to the way the shirt is. So you can do that as well. If you wanted to kind of really follow the curves of the shirt not going to really get you know that technical that detailed and you don't have to worry about applying the warp just go ahead and um, select it all group it and then put it on whatever background you're going to put it on to create your um, mock-up that you will take a snapshot of so with the one um down here um so what i did with this one was use the transform panel All right, we're going to um, going to go back over here and let's see, we're going to take this back to zero and zero so that it's nice and straight and also go back to rotate to where it's nice and straight. OK, I'm going to move this temporarily. We're going to place this here. But as you can see, her body is not straight up and down like his is. So first thing I did was just give it from the center point here, I just gave it a little turn. So now it's following the angle of her shirt. Then because she's also has like, you know, a little tilt to her body, we're gonna go to the transform panel, click on show shear handles, and we're going to bring this side down because that's kind of how the, the angle of her body and maybe even bring this side up depending on how much we took the other side down and just kind of play around with it that way um she's her body is also like at the bottom it's kind of shifted to the left so you can take this and move it to the left some and you can move the top to the right because that's the direction it's going in um, i do the same thing as far as taking the transparency down just a little so that it's not just so, so bright. And I just, sometimes I think it's a little bit harsh looking. So I'll take it down just a little bit. And then for this little piece right here, I'm not, you know, a huge fan of, um, you know, crop, like I don't wanna have to do a lot of subtracting and things like that. So I have this little piece right here. Um, how you can create that, I'm going to move her off to the side. And, oh, I just noticed that this was a picture. They didn't do a very good job. She was in a, another different kind of shirt. And then they put the color overlay over just this part. Didn't do a very good job because I can see it all over her hands when they cropped that out. All right. I'm going to put a box right here. And I'm going to fill that box with white. Uh-oh. Let's go B and let's fill that box with white. Then I'm going to take another box and fill it with black and send it to the back. 
Then I'm gonna go over to my trace tool and make um, put a put the box over it. We're gonna take our threshold down to where we capture nothing but the black. And we're gonna hit trace. We're going to click on that and move it over. Release compound path, hold down shift, click on that uh, piece and delete the rest. Then we're going to fill it with color and remove the line color and place that right there so that it just masks it off. And I didn't have to worry about um, cropping that away. So when I put it on like my background and things like that, if I had it on a colored background, I would make that background or well, that little piece the same color as that background or the same pattern as that background. That's just one of the ways that you can do it. When it comes to the one right here to make it look like it was going behind her hair, this piece is manually traced. I use my edit points. Um, so I'm sorry, not that one. We're going to go to our line tool, go to draw curve. And I just made a very rough, you know, didn't have to be precise, but just kind of use my edit points and clicked around and then come back up and connect it. It's going to go ahead and now, if that ever happens, if you ever have nothing selected and you choose a color, it becomes your default. Just go back in and make it no color. Now, the next time I draw a shape, it won't have color. So now I'm going to right click and copy my image, hold down shift, click on the, um, click on the little shape that I created and we're going to modify and crop and then right click, paste in front, and I'm gonna send it to the back. So now it looks like her hair is actually over that part of the design. So that's um, a few of the ways that I create mock-ups. All right guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video and it was helpful. If you have any additional questions, do not hesitate to go ahead and post them as a comment below. If you aren't subscribed, hopefully this video um, in, you know, encourage you encourages you, excuse me, to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you are notified whenever I release new content. For this entire week of, Je of July 13th, so that's that Monday until that Friday, I will be releasing a different video on different design techniques um, within Silhouette Studio. I also will have, um, depending on when you're watching this, which you can probably buy the payback, my design boot camp for just advanced designing and for t-shirts and things like that. Uh, we have the t-shirt ones on the weekend of, well, July 13th and 14th, no, I'm sorry, not July 13th, July 17th and 18th. Um, and then we have one the following week, the 25th, 24th and the 25th for advanced design techniques. So check out my shop, shop.teleholicsanonymous.com if you are interested in taking any of those classes. Um, also, be sure to join me over on Facebook and like and follow over there. I do daily live Q&As, um, helpful videos, um, Tracing Tuesdays, and a lot of different things to help you guys learn Silhouette Studio and master it and also you know, perfect your crafts with sublimation, paper crafting, and things like that. Also, check out Elite Prints and Creations with a K. That is my secondary channel where I do different sorts of crafting or things that aren't actually in Silhouette Studio. All right, guys, until next time, have a great one.